this webinar we're going to be investigating the situation where we've got an engine with individual throttle bodies and a turbocharger. In this case we're going to be looking at the Nissan RB26 fitted in this case to an R32 Nissan GTR. So this is actually a twin turbo engine that runs six individual throttle bodies. This situation with an individual throttle body engine and turbochargers is relatively rare so a lot of tuners won't experience this uh, and if you are coming into your first time tuning one of these engines with uh, individual throttle bodies and a turbocharger it's going to present you some unique tuning uh, circumstances that if you aren't aware how you need to deal with this it's going to be all but impossible for you to achieve uh, a really good accurate tune that's going to to maintain good control over fuel and ignition timing as you vary both throttle position and uh, boost pressure. Now as usual with all of our webinars we will have a section for questions and answers at the end of the webinar so if you do have any questions about uh, what we're talking about today please ask those in the chat or in the comments and I'll address them at the end of the webinar. So the problem we have here and this really is irrespective of whether we have uh, a naturally aspirated or a turbocharged engine with individual throttle bodies when we fit those individual throttle bodies and we remove the large uh, common plenum chamber and single throttle body that is more commonly fitted to engine the problem is that manifold absolute pressure the manifold pressure uh, is no longer a good uh, or suitable indicator of engine load so in the aftermarket tuning world uh, we're almost exclusively going to be using the speed density tuning principle where we are calculating mass airflow rather than measuring it directly and we're calculating that using manifold absolute pressure and the ideal gas law. Uh, so really the manifold absolute pressure uh, input is the key point to one of the key inputs to that calculation and if uh, if the manifold absolute pressure is no longer a good indicator of our engine load it's really impossible for the ECU to properly calculate in particular uh, the amount of fueling required. So that probably is all a little bit hard to get your head around so I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, sort of a, a description of what actually happens and why that's the case. So first of all to keep things really simple uh, let's consider a naturally aspirated engine running individual throttle bodies. Uh, now because we've got such a short uh, runner length post throttle body. Uh, we don't have that large common plenum like we'd normally do with a single throttle body and plenum arrangement. What we find is that the manifold pressure after the throttle bodies on that arrangement is possibly going to reach atmospheric pressure or very close to it from uh, maybe as little as 30% throttle opening. So if we're using our manifold air pressure signal, our MAP signal as our load signal, once we get to 30% throttle we're right in the top top row of our fuel table and obviously this means that as we move from 30% all the way up to 100% we're sitting in exactly that same point in our fuel table so it gives us really really poor control uh, over the fuel delivery and the upshot of this is that if we have the engine tuned so that it's running the correct air fuel ratio. The instant we first get into that, that atmospheric pressure row of our fuel table, if we get our air fuel ratio correct there, by the time we get through to wide open throttle, we have obviously at wide open throttle dramatically increased the airflow into the engine. We're going to be very, very lean. The engine's going to be running horribly. Conversely, if we have the engine tuned so that the air fuel ratio under wide open throttle conditions is perfect, what we're going to find is that as we back off the throttle we're going to fall into this massive rich hole because we're still supplying that same amount of fuel for 100 kPa or atmospheric pressure but as we close the throttle the actual airflow is reducing and we're still supplying that fuel so obviously our air fuel ratio is going to go rich. So this is the problem we've got it's basically impossible to tune and the, the situation is the same for a naturally aspirated engine or a turbocharged engine it's impossible to tune our fuel delivery if we're going to use manifold absolute pressure as our load axis as we normally would in a speed density system if we're faced with an engine with a common plenum and single throttle body. With a turbocharged engine we get exactly that same scenario that I just described only it's kind of magnified. We can either choose to get the correct air fuel ratio at our desired boost pressure at wide open throttle 
and deal with an excessively rich air fuel ratio at part throttle which may make the engine hesitant and horrible to drive uh, or alternatively we're going to end up very very lean under wide open throttle so if you're going to use manifold absolute pressure alone you just cannot fix this so the solution for these problems is that we need to use throttle position uh, as our load axis this is also often referred to as alpha n now this fixes our problem with resolution we can get really good resolution when we're using th our throttle position sensor for uh, the load axis on our fuel table and if we're running a naturally aspirated engine this is really the end of our discussion uh, it does become a little bit more complex though when we add a turbocharger and the reason for this is that we obviously can have very different manifold pressure values at a constant throttle position. So for example uh, if we go to wide open throttle at 3000 rpm on our turbocharged car and uh, we have the turbocharger running at the minimum boost pressure we can, let's say for example that's 10 psi, uh, that's a very different amount of air entering the engine than, than if we then go and uh, increase our boost pressure and we go up to 25 psi. Uh, so if we're using throttle position alone we cannot accurately schedule our fuel and control our fuel delivery uh, for a turbo charge engine. Uh, while I'm talking about using throttle position for the load axis another thing that's worth considering here or is important to consider is the uh, resolution that we're going to need in our fuel table when we do this and uh, what I mean here is that uh, with a throttle body if we consider the airflow through a throttle body it's very very non-linear. Uh, what this means is that if we open the throttle body 20% we're not going to end up getting 20% of the available airflow through the throttle body. What we find is that as we start to open the throttle body we initially get quite a large increase in the airflow and then the further we open the throttle body uh, the less that airflow increases and you'll quite often find that uh, as we move from maybe 80 to 100% throttle or 90 to 100% throttle uh, often there's almost no uh, difference in our required fuel delivery. Uh, so what this means is when we are setting up any fuel table or any of our tables for uh, an alpha N setup where we're using throttle position, uh, we want to be quite tight with our brake points down around closed throttle. Now let's just get a little off track for a second. I'll just head across to my laptop software and I just want to show you this. Uh, we are jumping a little bit ahead but I just want to show you that resolution, resolution effect. So uh, here we've got our main fuel table. You can see our parameter there is our throttle position and we're moving from the bottom of our table to the top we're going from closed throttle to open throttle and you can see down around closed throttle I've got quite tight groupings, quite tight break points. We go 0, 2, 5, 7 and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15 percent. Uh, once we get up to 20 percent you can see I uh, start opening up those break points a little. We go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and then as we get to 60 percent we open them up even further and we've got 60, 80 and 100. So what I'm trying to do there is just set my break points to match uh, the way the airflow varies through that throttle body and if we didn't do that if we simply set break points every 20% uh, throttle opening uh, what we're going to find is it will be very very difficult to control the fuel delivery uh, down in the idle and cruise areas and that's going to end up uh, with us uh, either too rich or too lean with it basically impossible uh, to get the air fuel ratio where we need it reliably and consistently. Right, I'll just head back across to my notes for a second Okay, so with the uh, turbo application, as I've said, we, we add some complexity there because uh, the uh, airflow is going to vary depending on the boost pressure as well as our throttle position. Uh, so we need a way of varying our fuel delivery based on our manifold pressure as well as our throttle position. So this sounds a bit tricky. We've now essentially got uh, another parameter thrown in, into the mix where we're now not just dealing with a three-dimensional fuel table where we're looking at our fuel versus uh, throttle position and RPM. We also are looking at it in four dimensions really when also considering manifold pressure. Uh, so we need to be able to adjust the fuel delivery as we change the boost but more than that uh, we also may want to track a different target air fuel ratio as our boost pressure changes. So what I mean by this is uh, we may p potentially target a leaner air fuel ratio at 5 to 7 psi of boost uh, and compared to what we would be targeting at 15 or 20 psi. Uh, so that's the consideration we need to keep in mind. 
So anytime we are tuning an individual throttle body turbo engine, one of the key parameters that we need to keep in mind here is the background fuel equation that the ECU is going to use. And again, we'll just jump across to my laptop software here for a moment. Actually, while I'm talking here, we'll just get our engine up and running so it can warm up a little bit. Uh, so if we go through... And this is obviously specific to the way Link do it. We're going to go through to our fuel main page. And the key point here that we're looking at is the equation load source. So this is just the way Link describe it. And what we've got here is the equation that we're using. And this is the common equation that we would normally use in a Link ECU for uh, most engines is load equals map. What this means in a nutshell is that if we double the manifold pressure, in the background the ECU is going to double the fuel supplied. So this just works on the basis that if we want, if we double the manifold pressure, all things being equal, if we want to achieve the same air fuel ratio, as we double the manifold pressure, we need to double uh, the amount of fuel being delivered through the injectors. And if we do that, that's going to maintain, or it should uh, ideally, maintain a consistent air fuel ratio. So this is the background equation that's going on. A lot of other ECUs will have uh, a manifold absolute pressure compensation table instead of this and normally that will be set up as a one-to-one -one table so as we double our manifold pressure we simply double the amount of fuel being delivered. This has the effect of reducing some of the work we need to do in the actual fuel table. It reduces uh, the, the, the requirement for us as tuners to actually double that fuel as the boost pressure increases. That simply happens sort of automat automatically in the background. So uh, for this system on a turbocharged engine, it is essential that we have uh, our load equals map uh, running. Okay, uh, so with that being said, let's have a look at the solutions that we have available to this problem. And uh, there are a few solutions here. There are actually three solutions that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and really this is going to come down to there is no right or wrong way of doing this. It really just comes down to uh, the ECU you're tuning and your own personal preference in a lot of ways. Uh, we're going to start with the way that we're using here, which is uh, the... The link, in the Link ECU at the moment, uh, we are using an injection time based fuel model. So uh, let's just jump into my laptop screen again for a moment. Uh, so our fuel equation mode at the moment, you can see this is set to traditional. And uh, this is Link speak for an injection time based uh, fuel model. So what we have here, and uh, this is pretty common in injection time based ECUs, we have a master fuel number. I can see that's four milliseconds. Uh, and essentially what this means is that if we have a number in our main fuel table here of 100% and we're running at 100 kPa before any of the background compensations are applied that would mean that our injectors would be open for 4 milliseconds. So the numbers inside our main fuel table here that we're looking at are these are simply percentages of our injector master pulse width. Okay, uh, let's just head back as well because there's one more aspect that's really important here which is our open loop lambda table. So this is another function that the link includes. And in this mode, how we're running this at the moment with our injection time based fuel model and the open loop lambda table, this is really, really close to how a volumetric efficiency based fuel model works. It's really almost a, a, a crossover. The only difference really is that we're not taking into account uh, the engine size or the injector uh, flow characteristics and hence the numbers back over here in our fuel table, uh, these don't have any representation to accurate volumetric efficiency numbers, but the system works really similar. So. How this works here, we've got our main fuel table, we've got throttle position on our load axis as we've already discussed, but the magic part, how this works in order to maintain our air fuel ratio as our uh, manifold pressure changes, we'll head across to our air fuel ratio lambda target table. So in this table we can see that the important key is that the load axis for this table is now set to manifold pressure. Uh, so we've got our main fuel table that is working uh, in uh, throttle position, 
terms and we've got our overlay table here, our lambda target table which is manifold pressure. So this allows us the ability to uh, adjust the air fuel ratio that we want based on our manifold pressure. So it's important when we're doing this to make sure that we actually set these targets realistically. We set the targets uh, to what we actually want the engine to be running. So for example you can see that a large chunk of this table here is set to a target of Lambda 1. This is predominantly a street engine uh, so it's going to spend a lot of its time cruising. So we want to get good fuel economy and particularly with these RB26 engines we're constantly going to find that when we're out on the open road cruising uh, we're actually going to be sitting up around this 100 kPa area or even marginally up into positive boost even though we've got uh, very very little throttle opening. So this is why I've got quite lean uh, lambda targets there even at 100 kPa. Uh, so what we're going to look at for today's test as well we're going to look at two separate boost points. We're going to look at our wastegate boost setting, uh, which gives us around about 10 psi peak or about 170 kPa. So this will have us operating up around this area of our target table. And then we're also going to increase our boost pressure so you can see how this whole system works nicely and, and automatically. And our peak boost pressure setting is 220 kPa uh, which for those who work in PSI gives us around about 18 PSI gauge pressure. You can see that I've just brought those targets down a little bit there where we've gone a little bit richer at 0.8 lambda. So this is the background work we need to do. We need to set up our fuel mode, we need to make sure we've got our fuel load equation set to load equals map, we need to set up our main fuel table in uh, relation to throttle position and then we want to set up our air fuel ratio target table uh, like we've done there uh, with manifold absolute pressure. Uh, now we are really focusing solely on the uh, fuel side of this. I will just quickly jump across though and show you that the ignition side of things really is quite conventional. Uh, we're not going to deal with this again, we're just simply using a conventional manifold absolute pressure axis uh, for our ignition table. So it's the fueling that's really the tricky bit with an individual throttle body uh, engine. Okay so with that all set up let's actually get the engine up and running here on our mainline dyno and we'll go through and we'll have a look at how we can make some tuning changes. Uh, and really for those of you who are familiar with tuning turbocharged engines uh, this actually becomes incredibly easy uh, because all we're doing is setting our, uh, our throttle position and we can adjust our fuel delivery to suit. So let's just get ourselves up and running here. Oh, we'll just go to 2,500 RPM here on our dyno, if I can actually get everything running, just give me a moment here and I'll just change one of our settings on our dyno, taco trim will make my life a little bit easier. Okay, uh, so at the moment I'm at 15% throttle, uh, I can probably close the throttle down a little bit beyond this but realistically uh, that's, that's fine for the purposes of our demonstration here. Uh, what I might do, we've got our manifold pressure here but it's probably a little bit small for most of you to see so uh, let's just bring that up here, just bear with me and I'll just add our manifold pressure into uh, our digital readout so you actually be able to see the relationship between our manifold pressure and our throttle position. Alright so that will now display at the bottom. So we've got our lambda target here, this comes from our AFR target table. Uh, we've got our measured air fuel ratio, this is coming from a wideband air fuel ratio sensor and then we've got our manifold pressure. So at the moment we're in vacuum and the process is simply the same as tuning any speed density system. All we can do is simply make adjustments to the numbers in our fuel table until we're on target. And all I'm going to do is just climb up this column here using the dyno in steady state and uh, adjust the fueling until I'm on my target. Uh, we can see that at 20% throttle we're still in vacuum there at 89 kPa. We'll just increase our throttle again oh. and we'll come up to 30%. So you can see now we're moving into positive boost pressure, we're at about 106 kPa so we're just starting to cross over into positive boost and that's why you're starting to see our lambda target fluctuate a little bit here. Uh, so we're sitting at 0 0.98, you can see we're pretty much right on that there. Uh, so we'll just go through, uh, we're a little bit lean there, oh no pretty good actually, maybe a little, just add a little bit of fuel there. Uh, and again we're just going through opening our throttle 
and it's very easy for us to really accurately here just access each of the individual zones because we're only worrying here about uh, the throttle position we're not worrying about our manifold pressure that's just happening all in the background automatically for us so we can see we're up to 129 kPa I'll just go a little bit further 80% throttle or a little bit rich at that point so I'll just pull a little bit of fuel out and then we can go all the way through to wide open throttle 132 kPa and again we're a little bit rich that's as simple as it is and we're going to basically go through and repeat that process so all we really need to do is worry about that one single parameter for our fuel table and provided the background calculation is, is already set up, uh, everything's going to track. So with this system just like a true volumetric efficiency based system, if we head back to our air fuel ratio target table, nope, let's try and get our air fuel ratio target table, not our ignition table. If we head to our air fuel ratio target table and we actually make a change to our air fuel ratio target uh, in this table, just like in a VE based fuel system, it's actually going to affect the injector pulse width and hence uh, our actual fueling is going to change. So let's just demonstrate that. We'll just come back up to we'll come back up to our set point of two and a half thousand RPM. Uh, we'll come up to this point here in our air fuel ratio target table. Uh, you can see we're, we're a little bit rich, but we're pretty close. We're about 1% uh, richer than our target. Our target at the moment is Lambda 1. Let's just change that to 0 0.9. And straight away you can see that our measured air fuel ratio actually tracks that change. So this is the important part. This is what the open loop AFR table does in the Link ECU when we've got that enabled. It actually affects uh, the overall amount of fuel being delivered. And before we move on and have a look at some wide open throttle ramp runs there, I just want to explain to you why that's the case. Uh, for those of you who have been through our uh, EFI tuning fundamentals course, uh, for me one of the really key takeaways from that course is learning how to apply a correction factor uh, so that if your air fuel ratio is too rich or too lean compared to your target you can simply calculate straight away a correction factor that you can apply to uh, correct that error in one adjustment and this is exactly what that open loop air fuel ratio target is doing in real time as the engine is operating. So what it's doing is it's looking at uh, our desired air fuel ratios coming from our target and what it's doing is it's always assuming that uh, the fuel table is tuned to lambda 1 or 14.7 to 1. Uh, so what it's doing is it's taking the uh, air fuel ratio that it assumes we have, in this case lambda 1, and it's dividing that by the air fuel ratio or lambda target we want our target lambda let's say that's 0.8 so if we divide 1 by 0.8 that'll give us a multiplier of 1.25 so in other words if we were running at lambda 1 and we really wanted to be running at lambda 0.8 if we multiplied the amount of fuel we were providing by 1.25 in other words add 25% more fuel we will achieve our target of 0.8 lambda so that's the whole principle behind this and this is why we can track our air fuel ratio target changes uh, while we're using a throttle position based fuel table. Okay, so with that out of the way now, we're going to have a look at a couple of wide open throttle ramp runs. So first of all, let's just have a quick look back in our fuel table. So this is the bit that's a little hard for tuners to get their head around if they're used to tuning conventional turbo engines. The whole time that we are doing a wide open throttle ramp run, we are only going to be operating in that 100% throttle row of our fuel table. So for our first run here, what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to run, I'm going to perform two runs. I just want to check. Okay, so I've just basically closed down our wastegate uh, duty cycle table here for our very first run. So we'll be running on our, our wastegate spring pressure. That should be, as I said, around about uh, 10 psi. Let's head across to our mainline dyno uh, and we'll get our first run underway. So uh, on the dyno screen at the moment we've got three pieces of information. At the top we've got our air fuel ratio in lambda. I've got a reference line in there at 0.8. Remember our target here is 0.82. So it should be a little bit above that line. Uh, below that we've got our manifold absolute pressure. Uh, this time we should be seeing around about 170 kPa peak. And then of course we've got our power at the bottom. Alright so with that all out of the way let's get our run underway.
All right, so everything worked pretty nicely there. You can see that uh, our air fuel ratio tracked just above that white reference line as I said it should do. It's always nice when it actually works the way it should. Uh, unimportant for our demonstration today, but we've got 213 kilowatts at the wheels or 286 horse at the wheels, which is shown at the bottom. And then we've got our manifold pressure, which has done pretty much exactly what uh, I was expecting it to do. Uh, let's just dive into our laptop software and we'll just have a better look at exactly what's going on here so let me just zoom in a little bit so on this uh, these the groups that we're looking at here at the top we've got our engine RPM uh, we've got our manifold pressure below that uh, again if we just sort of look at our peak point yeah, we're at about 170 kPa. Uh, our next group down is the important one though. We've got our air fuel ratio lambda target versus our measured lambda. So the darker blue is our measured, uh, sorry, our target, and the lighter blue that's moving around a little bit is our measured lambda. So the point is, you can see at the start of the run, we're at 100% throttle. Uh, we're actually a little bit rich there, but let's look at a point as we just start to ramp up. Uh, so we're at within 1% of our target. As we ramp down to our target, you can see we're always pretty well right on that target and we get to 156 kPa, 3500 RPM, we're on our target of 0.82 and you can see that while it does move around we're right on that target the whole time. So uh, the ECU is doing its job even though we are only running through that one row of our throttle position uh, fuel map. Even though you've seen there our manifold pressure at the start of the run was 108 kPa and we've seen 170 kPa at the end of the run. Okay. So that makes it really easy. Obviously when we are making tuning changes, if we were a little rich or a little too lean uh, during that run, it makes it really easy to highlight exactly uh, which cell we need to change. What we're going to do now though is let's just head back into our wastegate target table, wastegate duty cycle table. Uh, this is a pretty basic uh, open loop table so all I'm doing is just extending that table out into the areas we were just running in. So we're going to do our second run now. So for our second run we now should be targeting approximately 220 kPa. So that's a pretty big jump from the 170 that we just ran. And we are expecting now that our air fuel ratio should still track, uh, still should track exactly where we want it to be. So let's just bring up the air fuel ratio target table. So remember this time we're at 220 kPa. We're going to be targeting a little bit richer so hopefully this time we should be on our reference line that I've just put in there. So what I'll do is we'll just save this run. We'll call that test 2. That run's going to stay up on our dyno screen while we perform this second run by the way as well. So you'll be able to see uh, it overlay particularly the boost and the air fuel ratio in real time. So let's get back up into fourth gear on our dyno here and we'll head across to the dyno screen and we can start our second run. So that's also done pretty much exactly what I was expecting to demonstrate. So you can see our power shot up to 262 kilowatts, 351 horsepower at the wheels, which is no big surprise with that jump and boost. We can see that jump and boost here. We're right on our 220 kPa target, so that's doing its job. The important thing though is our air fuel ratio. So we've got a little bit of a lean hole here, but um, nothing really too major. What I want to concentrate on is for the most part through this run, we're on our target. Uh, remember we were targeting 0.8 this time but there's a little bit more to that so let's jump into our laptop software for a moment and we'll have a look at uh, what we've got to display. So again ignoring for a moment we've got a, a little bit of a lean spot there which I'm not going to concentrate on. For the most part we are right on our target uh, so everything has tracked that background calculation in the ECU as we've increased the boost pressure in the background it's done two things. First of all as we've increased the boost pressure it's also naturally increased the fuel delivery remembering that as we double boost pressure uh, we need to or double air density we need to double the fuel delivery in order to achieve uh, the same target air fuel ratio but of course this time we're not trying to achieve the same target air fuel ratio we also want to be richer so that's where that open loop air fuel ratio table has come in. That 
that's added some additional fuel as well. Now, the point that I wanted to show you though is right in the top end here, and it's not too dramatic because we are only running 220 kPa here. We're starting to see that our air fuel ratio is now actually drifting a little bit rich and this presents a problem for us. The reason that presents a problem is because if we want to correct that rich area we're going to have to go back to our fuel table and we're going to have to remove a, a little bit of fuel from this main fuel table in the areas that were a little bit rich. That's going to also have the effect though of now leaning out the air fuel ratio when we're at our low boost setting. So uh, we've got no easy solution there. We can't, uh, we can't fix our high boost problem uh, without uh, affecting our low boost problem. And this is the issue we do see when we're using throttle position uh, for our main fuel table. And the problem comes in when we start to push the turbochargers harder and what we see is that the uh, the back pressure starts to build. So basically the turbocharger starts becoming less efficient, it's not flowing so well. So when we're doing this what we're going to find is from our minimum wastegate pressure that we can run up to maybe 50 or 16 psi of boost depending on your turbocharger's size uh, everything's going to track nicely as you increase the boost pressure the air fuel ratio is just going to magically do exactly what you ask it to do but as you start increasing the boost further and further and the turbocharger starts to present a bit of restriction to exhaust flow what you're going to then find is that at higher rpm at those higher boost settings you're going to start see, seeing that air fuel ratio uh, taper off richer so as I said here we've only gone from one 70 to 220 kPa. If we've gone up to 250 or 260 kPa, uh, that situation we've got there is going to become much more prominent. So of course we need a way of dealing with that situation. That's pretty easy though, we've got some options there which we're now going to look at. We'll just jump back into our laptop software and what we can do in order to deal with that is we can add another compensation table. So in this case I'm going to go to our 4D fuel table which I've already set up and uh, this engine has been previously tuned. I just chose to eliminate this trim just to show you the situation. But this 4D table basically provides a compensation in terms of a percentage change to our main fuel delivery. Uh, you can see here we've got our load axis set to manifold pressure. That's an essential part of this. And what we can see here is that at high RPM and higher boost pressure, we're actually starting to trim a little bit of fuel out. At uh, 6,000 RPM we're trimming out 1%, as we move to 6.5 it's minus 3 and then finally at 7,000 RPM and above uh, we're now trimming out minus 4%. So prior to actually uh, beginning this webinar the, that calibration, that table extended down into our 220 kPa uh, row as well and that fixes that little, lean, uh, that little rich area that we were seeing. Uh, so of course what we would find is that if we were going to run boost pressures above 220 kPa it's likely that we would end up needing to remove further fuel uh, from the zones as we continue to increase boost and we continue to find uh, that the turbocharger becomes more and more restrictive. So we might end up with a table uh, that looks something like that. So that's the basis for individual cylinder, throttle body, turbocharged engine mapping and those are kind of the tricks. So really the main aspect is uh, we, need to, uh, we need to use the throttle position as our main fuel uh, table axis. We need to have our open loop air fuel ratio table turned on if we're running in traditional mode. Uh, we also need to make sure that our main fuel equation in the link is load equals map so that it can do that automatic compensation for the fuel delivery as our manifold pressure varies. And then what we're going to do is simply tune the engine running throttle position for our fuel table. We've got our air fuel ratio target set to what we actually want to achieve. And then as we increase the boost and we find that the turbocharger starts to become restrictive, we can use our 40 compensation table that we've just looked at in order to make further corrections. Okay, so that's one method that we can use to uh, provide that tuning. We're going to look at a couple more though and I just want to mention here, it's a good time to stop and say that we will be uh, moving into some questions and answers shortly. So uh, if you do have any questions, I know this is a technical topic so it's quite likely that uh, you guys are going to have some questions about this please feel free to ask them in the comments uh, or in the chat and I'll do my best to address them. 
Okay, so that's the first option. This uh, is the original option that I used on the Link range of ECUs uh, because at the time they didn't have their modelled, or in other words, their volumetric efficiency based fuel mode. Uh, traditional was all we had back then. The ECUs originally were only injection time based ECUs. So that's why I became familiar with that option. Uh, but in more, more modern ECUs, uh, you can now achieve exactly the same aim by using using the VE fuel model uh, and in this case it basically really does exactly what we've just looked at as I kind of alluded to at the start of this uh, that traditional mode using links uh, open loop air fuel ratio target overlay table really has the ECU responding very similar to a VE fuel model uh, albeit the numbers in our fuel table uh, do not represent true volumetric efficiency they will show the same shape as a VE curve but they are not representative of VE uh, so of course now with uh, Link having their modelled fuel equation which is a VE fuel mode uh, we can use that instead so this requires us to be a little bit more particular the ECU will need some information about the injector size it will need information about the fuel we're running on such as the density, the stoichiometric air fuel ratio etc and in a volumetric efficiency based fuel mode uh, the air fuel ratio target table naturally acts uh, to adjust the fuel delivery. So the, the, the way we set this up is exactly the same our volumetric efficiency table is set up based on throttle position our air fuel ratio target table is set up based on manifold absolute pressure and then of course the tuning is exactly the same the only real difference this time uh, the numbers that we are putting into our fuel table uh, should really be representative of true VE. Uh, we also need to keep in mind we will still need under those circumstances to uh, potentially use a 40 compensation table in order to correct the air fuel ratio at high boost level, uh, high RPM where the, uh, the fueling starts to move a little bit rich which it naturally will. The last option I want to go through is uh, one that hopefully will explain the situation. I know that that open loop air fuel ratio target table confuses a lot of tuners. Uh, it is a little bit abstract and I know a lot of tuners do struggle to get their head around that system. So what I'm going to do is go through another mode of setting this up uh, so that we can see how we could do this if we didn't have an open loop air fuel ratio target table. So again let's just jump into to my laptop software here and what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same we're going to start with our main fuel table tuned relative to throttle position now what we'll do is we'll jump into our fuel main settings we'll just uh, just highlight a couple of things in our fuel main settings here Okay, so the first thing is, again, essential part of this, we still need to have our load equals map uh, fuel equation. That's an essential part. This time what we're going to do, though, is we're going to disable our open loop lambda target table. So what that means is the AFR target table, let's just head across to it again, the air fuel ratio target table now will have absolutely no impact on our tuning. Uh, we can put whatever numbers we want into this table, uh, it'll have zero impact on the actual fuel delivery. Uh, in this mode, the only use for this table is if we were to run closed loop fuel control, which at the moment we're not. So now we can disregard that. So now we've got a, an ECU that is tuned purely via throttle position. Now the problem with that, as we've already discussed, is we're not going to have any way of adjusting our fuel delivery as the manifold pressure changes so uh, we may be in a situation where we get 100% throttle at maybe 100 or maybe 105 kPa uh, we could also have exactly the same throttle at uh, maybe 150 kPa and we want very different uh, air fuel ratios so remember in this situation we've still got that load equals map equation so the ECU will be uh, increasing the fuel delivery as the manifold pressure increases but the aim of the ECU there is just to maintain a consistent air fuel ratio. So now in order to make this work we need a way of making changes to the fuel delivery based on our manifold pressure. Well that's okay we can do exactly that. What we're going to do is head across to our 4D, if I can find it, there we go. We'll head across to our 4D fuel 
compensation table. So remembering again, this is set up at the moment to make a percentage change to the fuel delivery. You'll see that just as before, we've got this axis set up to manifold absolute pressure. And what we're going to do now is assume again, just like the open loop EF fuel ratio target table does, that the engine is tuned to lambda one everywhere. Now that might be fine down in these areas of the engine's operation down in vacuum where we're in cruise and we want good fuel economy. Certainly it's not going to be much good up around 220 kPa. So what we can do is make a percentage correction and this is essentially exactly what the ECU is doing with that open loop air fuel ratio target table in the background without us needing to even think about it. So remember our target at 220 kPa was 0.8 lambda so let's see how we can figure out what numbers need to go in this 4D compensation table to have exactly the same effect. Uh, remember what we're doing is using our correction equation so what we're doing is taking the air fuel ratio that we have, the measured air fuel ratio so remembering here for the moment we're simply assuming that we've tuned to lambda 1 so we're putting 1.00 in that then we want to divide that by the lambda or air fuel ratio target that we actually uh, want to achieve with the air fuel ratio that we're targeting uh, in this case remember that 0.80 okay so the result is that we need to add 25 percent fuel so all we need to do there now that we've made that calculation is enter a value of 25% in our 220 kPa row and that's going to have the effect of targeting 0 0.80 lambda and of course uh, we can basically do that at each point in this table uh, in this case let's just uh, interpolate that down and uh, we probably would want to also uh, richen that maybe up a little bit as we go higher and boost. So now we've got this compensation table that's doing all of that work in the background for us uh, and that's going to have exactly the same effect as our open loop air fuel ratio target table. Uh, we now also have that same scenario though where we're still going to have our air fuel ratio track a little bit rich as we increase our boost pressure and the turbocharger starts to become restrictive. This time we have the option of directly correcting that uh, within this table uh, in the areas where it is starting to move a little bit richer so we can just uh, do that directly inside of this table as, as opposed to in our last example we actually had to bring in this table uh, to control that. Alright guys we'll move into some questions and answers uh, hopefully I've done a reasonable job of, of explaining what is quite a complex topic there. Um, Right, so we've only got a couple of questions there. So David has asked, uh, pros and cons to TPS versus MAP. It's not really a case of pros and cons. This is more a case of it's essential in this case to uh, use throttle position as our main load axis. If we use MAP, we're going to get terrible results. It's that simple. Uh, in a conventional turbocharged engine, though, where we are running with a common plenum and a single throttle body, uh, this is where we do have the option. We can run either TPS or MAP. Now, conventionally, the most common way of doing this is uh, to use manifold absolute pressure obviously as our load axis. This is the way everyone tunes. Uh, my own personal preference is that I do see some advantages using throttle position uh, as that load axis even under those conditions and basically replicating what we've just looked at with our 4D mapping. So the reason I like this is because if we look at the system, the, the way the turbocharger works, it's incredibly good at creating boost. So let's say for example we have tuned our turbocharged engine and it's producing 20 psi boost at wide open throttle 4000 rpm. We've got our air fuel ratio tuned right on our target, everything's running perfectly. Now let's look at what happens if we're running at 4000 rpm steady state on our dyno and we start closing down the throttle body. As we close our throttle, the boost does not instantly drop. What we're going to find is that the wastegate is going to start closing down and that's going to have the effect of driving the turbocharger a little bit harder in order to maintain that 20 psi. So depending on a range of parameters, our turbo size etc, uh, we might find that we still retain that 20 psi of boost pressure until we get down to maybe uh, 70, maybe even 60% throttle or thereabouts. And if you're tuning using manifold absolute pressure as our load axis, what you're going to find is that 
as you close down that throttle, we're still staying in that one fixed cell. We're still staying in the 20 PSI, 240 kPa zone of our fuel table. And you're going to find that as you close down the throttle, because the turbo is working harder, it's adding more restriction to the exhaust flow. The actual airflow through our engine is reducing. And by virtue of that, we're going to find that we go richer. So while it's not the perfect way of describing exactly what's going on, I do find that using throttle position actually does a better job of, uh, how would I put it, a better job of uh, modelling maybe the volumetric efficiency of the engine uh, as we go through that exact same scenario. Uh, Andy has asked is there a reason to not do speed density primary and alpha N secondary? Um, I mean I guess you could do it either way. Uh, the the way I've gone through and tuned that there, um, just let me let me form a, a good answer for you here, Andy, because I think this actually is an important thing as I've as I've been thinking about this. So um, I'll, I'll go back to a very early ECU as an example that I tuned, uh, which is the HKS FCOM V Pro, and at the time uh, this was quite a popular ECU I was doing on a lot of Nissan GDRs because they came as a plug and play kit. Uh, so the way that the FCOM V Pro dealt with the individual throttle body turbo application on the GDR was with two separate maps. They had uh, a throttle position map and they had a manifold absolute pressure map. And the way they integrated those two maps was quite confusing and you got to a situation where uh, you could uh, be in a place in the map where you were too rich and then it became confusing as to which uh, map should you adjust in order to get the air fuel ratio where you want it. And there's no, the, with the FCOM V Pro there wasn't always a clear guide as to which way to do it. Uh, so the way that I've just gone through gives us a really clear indication there. Uh, we've got that background fuel equation working. We know uh, how to calculate what additional percentage fuel we need relative to manifold pressure that we need to add as our boost pressure increases and then we can simply uh, tune on throttle position and everything else is just going to take care of itself in the background. Uh, so to answer your question more specifically, if you flipped it round on its head and did it the other way around, uh, I don't see an easy way of doing that. Uh, I could be overlooking something here because uh, you're going to be in that situation where if your main fuel table is uh, on manifold pressure and they're using a, a throttle position as a secondary table, uh, it gets a little bit messy because uh, you, you, you're not necessarily going to have a clear indication of where you should be removing fuel or adding fuel. Uh, Brandon has asked, is it possible to have the ECU auto calculate the fuel correction in the logging section so if you have a dip in the fuel between your target and your lambda reading you can correct it for that spot on the graph rather than playing with the numbers in the fuel table. Uh, yeah you can uh, quick trim the fuel table but essentially uh, it, it is really the same as what we just looked at so uh, I think even with ECUs where they have an auto tune function uh, it's really important to understand what that functionality is doing. So quick trim in the link ECU, uh, maybe quick lambda in the MoTeC ECU, this will automatically uh, make adjustments to the fuel table values based on an error that we've got in our log. Uh, there's also the mixture map function in the link ECU but that's getting a little off track. But all it's doing is doing exactly that same calculation that I just did. It's looking at the measured air fuel ratio, so the air fuel ratio that we currently have and then it's dividing that by our desired or target air fuel ratio and then that's the percentage change. So all you need to then do is multiply the number in our fuel table by that percentage. So regardless whether you're going to use those uh, auto tuning functions, I think uh, it's going to make you a better tuner if you actually understand uh, the math behind that. And it's really simple, just understand what the ECU is actually doing and why. Uh, Scary Fast has asked, I realise this may be ECU centric but with Link's load option of um, barometric air pressure divided by manifold absolute pressure crossover would that be an alternative option for boosted engines uh, using ITBs? Um, you could possibly use that mode um, it definitely isn't the one that I would suggest. Uh, that mode, it's not one that I ever use to be honest, but if my memory serves correct, basically what it will do is look at uh, barometric air pressure uh, until you move up into positive boost pressure and then it'll move into a map uh, based fuel model. Uh, it's still going to have all of those same problems that I've talked about there uh, at the start of this webinar so it is not one that I would use uh, for a boosted ITB engine. I know that in the help file 
a link to give some uh, suggestions of when certain fuel modes would be suitable but yeah definitely the way I've described it uh, I guarantee you this is the way uh, that you will get the best and most consistent results with uh, the Link ECU in particular and I'll just cover as well like the, uh, the Nissan uh, factory ECU gets around all of these complexities by simply using a pair of mass airflow sensors and I think in the aftermarket we tend to look down our nose on mass airflow sensors uh, almost inevitably our aftermarket ECUs all work on the speed density principle but this is one of those areas where we really see that a properly set up properly calibrated calibrated mass airflow sensor actually makes a hell of a lot of sense and uh, makes the tuner's job easier rather than us needing to or the computer needing to calculate the mass of air entering the engine and using a bunch of these compensation tables we haven't even got into things such as uh, air temperature compensation as well so we're using all of these compensation tables to try and do the best job prop possible of modeling the actual airflow under these changing conditions the mass airflow sensor simply measures the mass of air entering the engine that's the bit that the ECU needs to know in order to schedule the fuel delivery and the ignition timing so if it knows directly the mass airflow from a mass airflow sensor its job is actually really really easy all right guys that has brought us to the end uh, of our webinar today so uh, thanks everyone for joining as usual uh, for our HPA members if you do have any further questions please ask those in the com in the forum and I'll be happy to answer them in there. That was just a taste of what we put on every week for our HPA Gold members. We've currently got over 240 hours of existing webinar content covering topics on engine building, engine tuning and wiring. Click the link in the description to learn more.